news. Italy's government has overnight announced a massive shutdown across the country as it struggles to cope with coronavirus. All cinemas, theatres and museums have closed. Around 16 million people across the north and east of the country are now in quarantine as part of the stringent new measures being introduced to tackle the spread of the virus known as COVID-19. All but emergency travel is prohibited to and from the entire region of Lombardy, which includes the financial capital of Italy, Milan. In China, only 44 new cases were reported yesterday, the lowest number of new infections in a day since January. All the new cases are in the city of Wuhan, where the outbreak started. Here, the government has announced plans for emergency laws to help tackle the virus. Among the measures are plans to allow people to leave their jobs and volunteer to care for those affected by coronavirus. There are also proposals to allow court cases to be heard via video link. The new laws will also consider the emergency registration of retired doctors and nurses. Here's Rich Johnston. The Italian authorities' hand has been forced by a steep rise in the number of infections in the country. Officials say there are now more than 5,000 confirmed cases, a jump of more than 1,000 in 24 hours. More than 230 people have died. The new restrictions will hit Italy's financial centre, Milan, and the tourist hotspot, Venice. Most of the cases have been in the region of Lombardy, as well as 14 other provinces in the north and east. We are facing an emergency, a national emergency. We have been applying precautionary measures from the beginning. We are acting with the utmost determination. Lombardy is home to 10 million people. That's like locking down Tokyo or New York. Gyms, swimming pools, museums and ski resorts will be closed. Restaurants and cafes can open, but customers need to sit at least a metre apart. Religious events like funerals or weddings are banned. And the Pope's weekly Sunday blessing will be delivered by video stream, instead of addressing the thousands who usually gather in St Peter's Square. Movement within the so-called red zones will be for urgent matters only. Anyone who breaks the quarantine rules could be jailed for three months. One of Italy's leading politicians says he's tested positive for the virus and has been self-isolating. I have always said don't panic. Let's fight this and in this moment I will, of course, give a good example and follow the advice of the doctors and of scientists. I will try to lend a hand by working from home as much as possible, and I am fighting, as it is right to do, for each of us and for the country. Officials say they'll start recruiting retired doctors to help deal with the surge in cases. The new measures are due to last until the 3rd of April. Rich Preston, BBC News. Well, our correspondent Bethany Bell is in Bologna, and she gave me an update. We got the first indications that this was happening yesterday evening uh, and then eventually the decree was announced at two o'clock in the morning local time by Italy's Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte. These measures which is a partial lockdown, a flexible lockdown if you like, um, of areas in northern Italy. Um, I'm here in Bologna which is about 40 kilometres outside those zones but the whole of Lombardy uh, to the north, uh, areas like Venice, Parma, Modena um, have all been uh, affected by these measures. People have been told that they shouldn't move in and out unless there are very essential emergency reasons for them to do so, essential work reasons. And the police will be able to have powers to stop people and ask them why they're moving in and out. Trains and planes, though, are still running, although of course we did see those pictures of how quiet it's looking at Milan uh, Central Station this morning. Um, but uh, of course it is Sunday morning and I think some people are certainly uh, trying to see how they can get in and out, people who don't live there, visitors for example. I mean it's a bit curious isn't it, for, on the one hand for the government to announce this, this closure, fairly dramatic move. Um, you know, it's the detail of the measures in itself is quite interesting, isn't it? You know, you'll be able to go to a restaurant, you have to see a minimum of a metre apart. Well, I think a lot of restaurateurs struggle to fill their restaurants and pay their bills if they don't pack a lot of people in. So that might cause some practical problems for them. But And they have to be shut by six o'clock in the evening. But we have this situation where apparently flights are still going in and out of Milan airport and the airports in Milan. I mean, that, that seems very confusing. 
like, I mean, again, it's a partial lockdown. It's not the sort of situation we've seen in areas of China uh, where there was a much more stringent thing. But it, it is what the Italy's government called a national emergency. Over the last week, the number of infections has continued to rise. Um, they said that last week would be a crucial week in, turn, in determining uh, the number of new infections. We've seen the infection numbers rising. And this decision has been taken by the government to try and stop that as much as possible. But there are people here in Italy saying, is this all coming too late? Should these measures have been taken before now? And what are we doing to our economy? If you're shutting down, even partially, cities like Milan, which is Italy's financial capital. Now, you're talking about the meter um, questions in, in, in cafes and restaurants. That has been the advice for a while now. Um, and, you know, we've seen in recent days, you know, people trying to establish that in restaurants. But in some places, it is simply very difficult for people to control that. That's Bethany Bell talking to me from Bologna.